so welcome to our first service for for the year um but it's 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 a lot can happen in just a couple of days and it's it's no mistake that we we still know that there's a lot going to be happening the rest of the year um and there are a few people who are a bit relieved that last year's finished um but it not quite I'm convinced that the next, this this year is going to be much better, but you know we've got God on our side, so I imagine we've got a lot to hope for and a lot to look forward to, whatever happens in our circumstances and our lives. So um, yeah, welcome. I just wanted to um, read uh, a New Year's poem, and it says, "A New Year's Plan." I tried to think of a clever new phrase a slogan to inspire the next 365 days, a motto to live by this coming new year. But the catchy words fell flat to my ear. And then I heard his still small voice saying, consider this simple daily choice. With each new dawn and close of day, make new your resolve to trust and obey. Don't look back caught in regret or dwell on the sorrow of dreams unmet. Don't stare forward, unanchored by fear. No, live in this moment, for I am here. I am all you need, everything I am. You are held secure by my strong hand. Give me this one thing, your all in all. Into my grace, let yourself fall. So, at last I'm ready. I see the way. It's to daily follow, trust and obey. I enter the new year armed with a plan to give him my everything, all that I am. So let's bow our heads and thank God for his gift and his presence. Lord, we thank you that we can gather together in, in a wonderful way to be able to praise you, to worship you, to listen to your words of comfort, to your, listen to your words of direction, your hope, um, the wonderful things that you have in store for us. And it help us to remind us how to bear the trials that we do need to face on day-to-day -day basis and trust in you each day. And we thank you for the messages that we will hear today and we ask your blessing on our service. In Jesus' name, amen. So announcements from David. Hi again, everyone. Well, a few announcements. Um, several re prayer requests, but I'll, I'll start with um, the announcement from Fiji and Tonga. Um, this is from the well-known Panube family. Carissa Panube, daughter of James and Alisi, had the honour of representing Tonga at the FINA World Swimming Championships in Abu Dhabi, swimming on the 16th and 17th of um, December. Carissa had established a new national record for Tonga in the 200 metre freestyle event, beating the old record by 2.68 seconds, which was set in 2019. This is her eighth time representing Tonga at the International Swimming Championships organised under the international body FINA. Her younger brother, Tong Lee, has also represented Tonga three times in these championships. And her older brother, Eugene, has represented Fiji as head swimming coach in several regional and international competitions, including Oceania three times, uh, Pacific Islands uh, Games rather two times, Youth Olympics once and Olympics once. And, but now because of uh, life goes on, because of work and family commitments, he's no longer, he no longer coaches. Now, Chris apparently did come back for Christmas, or still back, but she'll be returning to Phuket, where she has been swim training for the last six months under the scholarship, and she has six more months, which she will complete after her two-week break in Fiji. So that's well done again to the, the, the family that obviously came out of the water, <laughs> the Panube family. Now, there are several um, prayer requests. Um, 
This one uh, relates to our elder in Honiera, Henry Cooper, in the Solomon Islands. And um, just before Christmas, um, his son Clyde has sent this uh, note to Daphne and Bill Sydney. And um, apparently uh, Henry has been admitted again to hospital and is not faring well. This is what his son Clyde said in the email. My father has been very sick. Around July, he was admitted in the surgical ward and unfortunately had to have his right leg amputated. Since then, he's been struggling with illness. Now he is admitted again in the medical ward for infection and mild stroke. So, um, you know, we can certainly remember them for um, Henry in particular, but also for his, Clyde's family, um, a fellow elder over there in the Solomon Islands. And then closer to home, we've got three prayer requests. First, uh, this really comes from Phil, uh, updated a few days ago. This first one relates to Yvonne Wayne and she is suffering with a persistent sore on her ankle and that is very painful and very slow to heal. Her doctors told her that part of the problem is caused by the blood pressure medication she is taking, which is making it difficult for her body to heal the sore. And uh, she has been sent an anointed cloth that we know that God um, knows all the details and he certainly can um, fix it. So again, you know, let's bear um, her in our prayers for her painful sore in her ankle. And then Sandra Joy, thankfully it was Yvonne Wayne who actually has been keeping close contact with Sandra. Um, Sandra Joy had her heart operation about two Fridays ago, uh, but Sandra had expected to be feeling a lot more energetic than she is but admits that the effects of surgery may not be immediate. She's still feeling really tired when she had hoped to be brighter. Uh, so again, let's pray for her energies to continue uh, to increase and more speedily. So that's Sandra regarding her uh, post-heart operation. And then Julie Hay, um, she is suffering from... Um, fluid still leaking from her brain cavity and she will have an MRI in the next few weeks and then a consultation with the neurosurgeon. Her headaches are intermittent and she sometimes needs to lie down during the day to give her head a rest. So again, let's also remember Julie um, regarding the leaks from her brain cavity. I mean, all these ones are very serious in many ways so, but we know we can um, pray to a god in heaven who made the human body and can do the impossible so let's just remember these people in our prayers thank you
forces above. Join with all nature in manifold witness to thy great faithfulness, mercy, and love. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. We're blessed to celebrate the coming of another year with fireworks, parties, and cheers of goodbye to 2021 and hello to 2022. At the start of a new year, many people use the opportunity to take stock in their lives. They make resolutions to lose weight, exercise more, save money, or stop procrastinating. There's nothing inherently wrong with making a New Year's resolution. However, have you ever noticed that resolutions are often focused on self-improvement? Why do we often base our New Year's resolution on things we do not like about ourselves or things we think will make us whole? Why, when reflecting on our lives, do we tend to look at what we do not have versus what we do have? The truth is, God wants something different and better for us. While we do actively participate in the works to become more like Christ, our triune God invites us to be focused on the blessings we have already received and how we are being transformed by the goodness of God. Paul writes, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love, he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loves. The reality is that if we are in Christ, we have already been blessed beyond imagination. It is God's pleasure to bless his children, and he does not withhold his best from us. What would happen if we made our New Year's resolution in light of what we have received in Christ? 
What if we saw ourselves as overflowing with blessings? What if we saw ourselves as already chosen and adopted in Christ? For this new year, I challenge us to rest in the truth of what God says about humanity. Through Jesus Christ, we are holy and blameless in his sight. I pray that we will experience every spiritual blessing in Christ, no matter what this year has in store. I'm Cara Garrity, speaking of life. Okay, John 1, 1 to 5 and, and, okay. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. The true light, verse 9, the true light that gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and through the world, though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. John testifies concerning him. He cries out, saying, This is he of whom I said, He who comes after me has surpassed me, because he was before me. From the fullness of his grace, we have all received one blessing after another. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ.
never fail. You never fail. You never fail. Great is your faithfulness, God. to you from around different parts of New Zealand and over there and across the Tasman there in Australia. Uh, great to see you. Special welcome to the Natchalama family. It's wonderful to have you guys with us here in New Zealand and uh, good to see you. Happy New Year to you all and uh, welcome to 2022. God has lovingly given us another year to worship him and to be a blessing to each other. Millions of people around the world watched their clocks strike midnight and brought in the new year uh, with uh, fireworks and celebrations and time with loved ones. Uh, for many people, a new year brings hope because it represents a chance for a new start. 2021 had to be one of the most anticipated years of all time. 2020 had brought us the uh, global pandemic and a slew of devastating natural disasters and at that time, it was commonly said about a year ago, it was said 2021 uh, is going to be better because it just can't be any worse than 2020. The world brought in uh, 2021 with hope and gusto, craving a new beginning, the opportunity for a better tomorrow. But now that we're saying goodbye to 2021, a lot of people say good riddance as well, because we have to admit that that year didn't solve all of our problems. Uh, someone put it this way. The fact that 2021 has already finished is proof that time also flies when you're not having fun. The challenges of 2020, especially the pandemic, are still with us as we head into 2022. So this will be a challenging new year. There's no doubt about that. It feels like the whole world is holding its breath, wondering uh, what this year will bring. In fact, in the Herald this morning, I noticed an article here um, mentioned the the apocalypse is apparently upon us so so uh it's been quite a devastating time in history but uh we are greatly blessed to know that whatever happens good or bad we'll be okay because god is always with us he's promised never to leave us or forsake us and at the beginning of a brand new year let's focus for a few minutes on our great god and uh Notice, particularly today, I wanted to look at what he says about new things. And actually, he has a lot to say about this subject. When you think about it, the Bible talks about the new man, the new Jerusalem, the new covenant, uh, the new heavens, the new earth, new things are talked about, a new song is talked about, uh, the New Testament, of course, we have, and, and the list goes on. So today's sermon... Uh, let me bring up the title. You guys can all see that now. Sorry, I don't know how I did that. That was bad. Okay, well, there's, uh, this is a graphic here by Leanne to give her credit for a beautiful uh, graphic there. And that's what we were talking about today. 
new beginnings. And there are lots of new beginnings in the Bible. In fact, there are quite a few places where we see that God actually gets excited about new things. Uh, let's have a look at a scripture, for instance. Isaiah 42, 9 to 10. See, the former things have taken place and new things I declare. It sounds, you know, that God is excited about that. He's declaring new things before they spring into being. I announce them to you. Sing to the Lord a new song. So there's straight away into something else that's new. In the next chapter, Isaiah 43, forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I'm doing a new thing. You, you can see excitement in God's voice there. Look at this. I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Don't you perceive it? I'm making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. So God is uh, interested in new things. In fact, he is, above all, he's a great creator, our creator. And what is creation but bringing into effect new things? When he created the heavens and the earth, God came up with all sorts of new things, all sorts of things. And every one of them was new at the creation. And ever since the creation, he's kept on coming up with new things. Every year there's a spring season. The spring season is marked by new growth everywhere. A chance for all of nature to be renewed. Every day is a new beginning both physically and spiritually, as we read in Lamentations chapter 3, his compassions never fail, they are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. So those are the words actually of that song that we just sang earlier. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. Every new day is a new chance for us. Uh, we wake up renewed, hopefully. <laughs> it is a new day anyway. There are new things ahead of us then. And I often think in the morning of this wonderful verse in Psalm 118, verse 24, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Every day is an opportunity to forget about the problems and troubles of yesterday and to have a fresh new start, a new beginning with new blessings and new mercies from God. And a new year is an annual opportunity to be renewed and refreshed to launch into things with a new determination to do well. Maybe even to make a new, new Year's resolution on something that we want to improve on. Or There's nothing wrong with doing that. It's just that uh, no one ever keeps them for very long. Uh, maybe you can be the exception to that rule, the first person ever to have a New Year's resolution that actually lasts for more than a month. Let's look at an interesting statement that Jesus gave us uh, in the New Testament, Matthew 13, verse 52. He said to them, Therefore, every teacher of the law who has become a disciple in the kingdom of heaven is like the owner of a house who brings out of his storeroom new treasures as well as old. So the teachers of the law that he talks about there in the first line, they could only bring forth old things. But once they learnt the gospel, they had become a disciple in the kingdom of heaven. Well, then they could bring out new things as well as old. The kingdom of God involves studying new things and old things. The whole of history and God's revelation is divided into an old covenant with an old physical nation of Israel and a new covenant with a new spiritual Israel. And there are great treasures in each of those. I often catch myself in sermons comparing physical things with spiritual things because everything in the physical Old Covenant, the temple, even its furniture, the, the dress that the high priest wore, that the priests wore, the way they were ordained, the sacrifices, all of those things, they were physical things, but they have a spiritual parallel. And it just so happens almost every sermon that comes up, but I don't mind that because I look at what it says here that a person who's teaching the law, who has become a disciple in the kingdom, he's bringing out, he's talking about treasures that are new as well as old. One of, one of the themes 
repeated over and over in the Bible is that of leaving the past behind and having a new beginning. Interestingly, it's often associated in uh, crossing through a body of water in order to move into a new beginning. Right at the beginning in Genesis 1, there was water covering the, uh, the surf surface of the earth and a new be beginning came as the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Then, of course, at Noah's flood, the earth was so corrupt that it had to have a new beginning through water. And talking about water, I need some. So um, Noah's flood, also new beginning through water. Then Moses took the people of Israel through the Red Sea to a new life. Then Joshua took them across the River Jordan to a new life in the Promised Land. Then when Jesus came, there was another important new beginning. And we read about that in John chapter 1. That's the passage that Jenny read to us a few minutes ago, where in John 1 it says, In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. We see here twice the words in the beginning, and that points back, that reminds us of the first creation. That was a physical creation that began with darkness over the deep waters that covered the earth. So the first thing God said was, let there be light, and there was light. But that was talking about physical light. In the New Testament beginning, the world was beset by spiritual darkness. And John 1 goes on to show the first thing God did was to shine spiritual light in the darkness. Once again, he said, let there be light. And he sent Jesus, the light of the world. And for those people who let that light shine in their lives, Jesus brought the power to become sons and daughters, as verse 12 in John 1 shows. To all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. So each of us can receive the light of the world and have a new spiritual beginning as the children of God. Just as the beginnings in the Old Testament often involve crossing over a body of water, so we cross through water, the water of baptism, to be born again, to have a new spiritual life. Um, in 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old is gone, the new is here. When we become Christians, we begin to look on life in a totally new and different way. Everything we do now has a spiritual perspective, a spiritual dimension. Everything is done from the viewpoint of God's presence, God's way of life. And uh, notice what it says in Galatians 6.15. Neither circumcision nor un uncircumcision meets anything. What uh, counts is the new creation. Other versions use the word only. The only thing that matters, see that in the New English translation, the only thing that matters is a new creation. That's a pretty strong statement. But our new spiritual beginning is really all that, all that matters. We come through the waters of baptism into the new beginning of a new life. Interestingly, when a baby is born, they say, talk about the waters breaking. The waters bro Water precedes the birth of the baby. It's born through water, just as we are spiritually. In uh, Titus chapter 3, he saved us, not because of righteous things we had done, but because of his mercy. He saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit. So the washing, the water, the baptism, and that involves, that is our rebirth. And it's also, the, I guess, the water of the Holy Spirit comes into our lives. We are renewed. And this new beginning in our lives is, as they say these days, a game changer. We change dramatically as our whole way of thinking and acting is transformed. And we see that described in Ephesians chapter 4. You were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off the old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, to be made new in the attitude of your minds, to put on the new self, created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to your neighbor. So this new way 
uh, this renewal of our lives brings about action in our lives. We need to live in a new way, to change, to do things differently, to lead a new way of life, and to grow in this way of life, to grow in grace and knowledge, it says in Second Peter chapter 3. And thinking about growing in grace and knowledge, how does that happen? When you think about it, you grow in knowledge by adding something new to the knowledge that you already have. You grow in grace by doing something gracious that adds to your grace, that then you're growing. You grow in, say, the fruit of love by doing something loving, something new, by being more kind or more considerate or more friendly or more courteous than you have been before. So you're growing, you're developing new. It's a process of step-by-step -step growth. When you come to think of it, there can't be any growth without there being something new. For a plant to grow, something new has to be added to it. And we like to see our plants in the garden, something new, they just little bit by little is added. Uh, otherwise, they haven't grown if there's nothing new. We grow in patience by enduring a trial of health or unemployment or whatever. For one more day with a good attitude, that's something new, an increment of character has been grown in our lives as we get through that day and we survive it and we uh, don't get pulled down by it. The dictionary definition of grow is to increase in size or to become by degrees. It involves something new added to our character. That's how we grow. In 2 Corinthians 4.16, Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. The first part of the verse is all too true, all too true for many of us. As we grow older, the new thing that we're adding, because you're adding something new as you grow, it seems to be wrinkles and grey hairs. Uh, but that's just the outside. Look at the next part of the verse. Inwardly, that's what's important, what's happening inside. Inwardly, we're being renewed day by day. Every day is a new beginning physically, and it should be spiritually as well. Our physical body strength is renewed by taking physical food. We generally need to do that every day to take in our daily bread, as it's called. So we need to do the same spiritually. We won't be renewed automatically out of thin air in a spiritual way, just as we won't be physically. But it does happen if we pray and we study, we think about these things uh, daily. Is it actually possible to be renewed every day? I was just thinking about that. Uh, how can things always be new, to be renewed day by day. Isn't there a lot of sameness after a few years in the church? After hearing sermons for 40 years, can we be as excited about them as we used to be? Can they still be new? Well, the funny thing is that um, there's a funny thing about when we eat food, we eat it over and over, the same food over, over again, but we still really yearn for more of it every day. How would you like it, for instance, if right now, somehow through the screen, I could pass you a drink of um, beer or wine or maybe some beautiful fruit juice? What about a box of chocolates or something? Would that be something exciting and something you would enjoy? But you've had that millions of times. You've had hundreds, hundreds and hundreds of, uh, well, maybe not so much beer and wine, but uh, fruit juice and food. It's uh, sometimes, even though we've had them so many times in the past, they still seem to get better and better. And so spiritual food should be like that. And it can be. It can be continually new and refreshing and enjoyable too. We need to hunger and thirst for God's righteousness. But from time to time, being human, we can stray away from the freshness of God's word somewhat. So it can perhaps become a little bit stale. We can tend to become a, a bit bored, maybe a bit jaundiced about things. If that happens, it's good to think of the way we used to be at times when we were full of spiritual zeal and ask God to renew our love for him day by day through the Holy Spirit. 
so we can be renewed. Every day is a new beginning, uh, physically, and it certainly should be spiritually as well. I've found personally just the last few months I've been reading through the message version of the Bible. I'd have started at Genesis and worked on through, and I've found it to be fresh and new and exciting going through those books of the Bible that I hadn't read for some time uh, in that fresh uh, language of the message version. Right at the end of the Bible, God is still talking about new things as he makes us some promises about our future. In Revelation 2, verse 17, he says, To the one who's victorious, I'll give a white stone with a new name written on it, known only to the one who receives it. Again, in Revelation 3, verse 12, he says, I'll write on them my new name. So all the way through his word, God keeps on coming up with new things. You can tell he is thrilled by new things. He never faints or is weary. He never gets old, even though he's been around for, for zillions of years. He's always new. That's his nature and his character. Even though he's the ancient of days, he's always refreshed and renewed. Some of us ancient of days people might be encouraged by that. And we keep seeing this right to the, uh, the very end of the Bible. Let's have a look at the last chapter of the Bible. Well, is it the last one or the one before that, Revelation 21? Revelation 21 verses 1 and 2. I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. This is a spectacular new beginning for the entire universe. And verse 5, he who was seated on the throne said, Behold, I am making everything new, everything new. What a fantastic new beginning. But let's not forget what God says, uh, that in fact that is what should be happening now in our lives. In our lives now, everything should become new. When we become a Christian, everything becomes new. Second Corinthians 5 verse 17. Therefore, if anyone's in Christ, the new creation has come. The old is gone. The new is here. All things have become new, just as it says in Revelation 21, will happen to the world as a whole. So, celebrating a new year can be a great reminder of the new beginning we have in Jesus. Let's continue to put away the old man and become a new creation. Asking God for his Holy Spirit to keep renewing us day by day as we move on into the new year of 2022. Let's start into 2022 with a fresh new spiritual enthusiasm and excitement for the way that God is going to lead us over this year, ready to grow in our spiritual lives and to draw closer to him. May it be a fresh spiritual new beginning for each of us.
afternoon, everybody. Hopefully you can hear me well. Let's get myself settled a bit better. So for those wonderful words of Rex's to remind us of the future, how it will be. Let us pray. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, and your awesome Son who you presented to us to physically guide us and strengthen us and show us the way. Lord, it is always a new life with you here with us. Lord, we know that you are always in presence and in spirit, guiding and strengthening us and where we go, what we do. Lord, this year, well, as we hope, will be better than the last couple of years. But whatever happens, you are there with us. Lord, we know that people are not always well and from other illnesses, diseases, other than the ones that are the present epidemic. But you will get us through, Lord. You will strengthen and keep us safe. Lord, we ask for your blessing, your guidance, your strength, and your willingness to follow your Son to you, who is our Christ, our Redeemer, our brother. Thank you, Lord Father. Thank you for the Spirit to always be there with us. Amen. Yeah, continuing on from what Rex was saying, um, I was reading through and found a verse that was part of what Paul was saying. Excuse me if I keep looking away. I've got it on my little other screen. And it says, I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you being rooted and established in love, may the power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide, how long, how high, and how deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than we ask or imagine according to his power, that is at work within us. I think we need to look, as Rex said, in the future to Paul's words to Ephesians to guide us and to just give us that ultimate strength that is always there for us, will always help us to the Father. Thank you to our Christ and all things we do.